slipper into it. As Rotham spoils instead of oh, goodness. This is going to be another goal to crowd, and I think it is. This is turning into a bit of a belting. West Coast, I think this might be. I've lost track. It's like seven or eight goals in a row to Fremantle. This might even be nine. Nine consecutive goals to Fremantle, and he's put it through. Three quarter time, siren sounds, and the Eagles. Do they have a heartbeat in this game? Alright, g'day guys, welcome back to a special episode of the True Footy AFL Evolution Career. It is Western Derby 51, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken. And on top of that, we do have another debutant in West Coast Eagles colours. I've omitted Jake Waterman and restored, well, uh, restored Oscar Allen to the forward pocket. And Bailey Williams, the young Ruckman, 198 centimetres, comes into the side for his first game of AFL football. Against coming up against Rory Lobb and I think Sean Darcy's playing for him. I'm trying to scan that quickly. Maybe he's not actually selected today, so it might just be Rory Lobb. It is a tough ask. Lobb is one of the taller rucks in the comp, but Bailey Williams has earned his spot through a strong preseason and then further to that, some good early waffle form. As we see Fremantle running out in their correct jumper this time, that's pretty good. I think they're sort of mid table on the ladder at the moment as Jesse Hogan has returned to the side following his mental health sort of break. Um, Ethan Hughes looking very handsome there as the Eagles run out for what will be a big game, sort of, I guess. I mean, I think uh, the last couple of years, well, the last number, many years, actually, the Eagles have been winning derbies. But I don't think I'm so good at this game yet that I am definitely going to win this. So I'm pretty uh, intrigued to see how this is going to unfold. Obviously, Nat Nui and Shuey are still out. Shuey's done for the year. Nat Nui's done for another six or seven weeks. So that, or eight, another eight weeks, actually, I think. Uh, that's why Elliot Yo is striding out to the Senate to meet Nat Fife, and he might be playing a close role on him today once we get underway. Oh, Jamie Cripps, can he spot Liam Ryan? I thought he was free of him, Matt. He's not. Oscar Allen, he's got to take a run. Oh, he sprinted, but I... Th oh, he's kicked it. <laughs> what a mess that was. That is a really, really good goal from Oscar Allen to open the scoring. He's been restored to that forward line position where he plays his best football. And he has nailed a beauty. Takes possession. Gaff clears the congestion. Oh yes, another opportunity through Yo. The skipper has kicked a goal and the Eagles are quickly on the board with two straight kicks. Hickey for his first goal for the season. Has he put it through? He's just squeezed it home. And the Eagles have the first three. What is going on? This is madness. Oh, he's just taken it out. Yes, and Archie has just socketed it through for a goal. The Eagles putting on a clinic early on. Fremantle can't do too much to stop the flow. How is that spoiled? Just went straight to the only Fremantle player. Oh, too good. Travis Cole is taking a diving mark. Tom Brass couldn't quite get there. And he lines up to put Fremantle on the board. He's put it through. Oh, jeez, Fremantle, how did they get the ball that off so quickly each time? No idea how I conceded that goal, but alas, they've kicked two in a row. That is that Travi Collier again? Kick two in a row. Oh, J.K. yet to fire a shot in his career. Yes, Archie has just got it onto his boot and the Eagles get the quick reply. Oh, that is curled back and Walters has scored the goal. Fremantle have three of the last four and we are going end to end at the moment here at Optus Stadium. Jeez, what a kick, and they've just run out of time. It's quarter time. Fremantle fought back hard in that quarter. It looked like it was going to be a one-sided contest in this derby, but at the moment, Fremantle actually probably have more of the momentum. He gains possession. 
Hey, Josh Kennedy with his first mark for what feels like the season. And he's that's a great kick after I've just potted him. He finds skipper Elliot Yo. Yes, a high tackle awarded to Redden. Can he find someone short? Or will he go for goal himself? He might just launch a Tory, because you know what? I'm feeling Randy. It's a pretty good kick. Will it Will it be accurate? That looks pretty damn good. Jack Redden has launched it for a nutch, much needed goal. Nutch, these nutch. That was an absolute roost from uh, Jack Redden. Oh, I've been in a water free kick here. I'll take it. Cripps finds Oscar Allen on the lead. That is a great kick. The Eagles starting to find some targets inside their forward 50 now. Oscar Allen, this is a big kick. And that has just made it through. Snuck past the near side goalpost. And the lead extends 27 points. Now, Fremantle have been playing really well, but the Eagles have just been able to put it on the scoreboard more effectively. Jesse Hogan with the speed. Burns off Crisp. That would never happen in real life. Crisp? Did I say Crisp? I meant Crips. And that is actually a very good, very good play from Jesse Hogan. Unlucky to shave the pose there. Oh, as if Banfield did that. Alex Pierce playing deep forward for the Dockers. He had a shank earlier in the game. This would cut the margin to 20 points. And he's put it through and Fremantle got the quick response. Oh, he's kicked it. Croden with the crumbs has cut the margin back to 14 points. These Dockers will not go away. That is half time and this is a bit of an arm wrestle, I hate to admit it. But Fremantle have probably been the better side. The Eagles just a little bit more damaging and really, really precise with their kicks inside 50, which has allowed them to build a 14-point lead. But they're getting smashed in the ruck and I'm definitely feeling that. Bailey Williams and Tom Hickey are getting a bit of a bath from Rory Lobb. And Sean Darcy, who is in fact playing. All in all, though, we are doing fairly well in terms of stats. More disposals, more inside 50s. Tackles are pretty even. It is a pretty good game, to be honest. That is a good tackle by Oscar Allen. It's been paid high. And he did well to get there. A clean pickup. Oh, Fremantle about to waltz into what could be an open goal. And it is paid a goal just across the line. Bailey Banfield tearing me up, which hurts. What do you make of the game so far, Gary? There's some great skills on display right now. It's a great match. Oh, come on. He's got the footy in his hands. I'm going to leave that in the highlights for you. That was terrible. How does he handle it backwards when there's four eagles in front of him? That is a genuine glitch. But we've got a bit of a game on. Let's watch this replay. This is Duggan. Why is he here? Well, that doesn't make any sense. It wasn't even smothered. Nat Fife has run into an open goal, and this derby is absolutely on. No way. He's kicked a goal. This is absolutely one-way traffic, and the Dockers are in the front. In the front? They've hit the front. Ooh. Bit of a well, a there from, oh my goodness, Croden has outmarked McGovern. What Croden the heck is going on? And Fremantle are just pulverizing the Eagles at the moment. They've kicked the last five goals, I think. Or is it the last four? I think it's the last the last four. I think it's actually five. I think that might be six goals in a row to Fremantle. This is ludicrous. They're eight points in front. His teammates midfielders. That's a good spot up. Oh. Oh, that's stiff. That's so stiff. This is ridiculous at the moment. Fremantle are just... I've turned into, you know, God mode and are just annihilating me from any opportunity. Wow. This is dominant. Travis Collier out, out marks the much bigger Brad Shepard. He's lining up to make it a 20-point margin. The Eagles really need to find a response soon. And he's put it through, Croden, having a day out. 
I think that's his second goal. And it is 20 points to Fremantle. We really need the Eagles to lift. Hey, a free kick has been awarded to the Eagles. I've missed a lot of simple shots on goal this quarter. In fact, I don't think I've kicked a goal this quarter. Dom Sheed's got to put that through. It doesn't look like he's going to have the legs. It has been touched through. As Rotham spoils instead of... Oh, goodness. This is going to be another goal to Crowden, I think it is. This is turning into a bit of a belting. West Coast, I think this might be... I've lost track. It's like seven or eight goals in a row to Fremantle. This might even be nine. Nine consecutive goals to Fremantle, and he's put it through. Three-quarter time, siren sounds, and the Eagles. Do they have a heartbeat in this game? Oh, the bounce betrayed him. Oscar Allen's kicked a good goal earlier today. He needs to find a pass, and he's turned it over. That is pathetic. Elliot Yo needs to kick a captain's goal here. He's just put it through. He snuck it in from the goal square, and the Eagles have kicked their first goal in nearly two quarters. Archie, he's got a chance, and suddenly the Eagles are finding space, but it's not enough. He can't put it on the scoreboard. 19 points is the margin. Cox deciding where to go with the kick here. Oh, how's that happen? Darling, is that his first kick? Just about. Oh, that could sneak through. Oh, what? That's counted as a soccer off Oscar Allen. Off the goal line to go out of bounds. Right here. Oh, high tackle on Ethan Hughes. Liam Ryan has been pretty good at drawing high tackles in the last couple of games. Not on purpose. That is a crucial kick and it's back to six points. The Eagles still a chance to win this game. It doesn't feel like they're playing well enough to win the game, but on the scoreboard, they're within a sniff. Surely there's a chance here. Oh, he's taken a mark, Brendan Archie. He's been quiet since those opening rounds. Hasn't had much to do today, but this would level the score. He snuck it through, and we are back to level pegging in this game. Back in the middle to resume play now. Thrashes it. He gains possession. Oh, Hickey. Has he found someone? Doesn't hold on to the mark. No. I haven't seen him for a while, Gaz. Yeah, he's having a real quiet match. Tim Kelly with the chance to put the Eagles in front. He shanked it. It is a behind. The Eagles regain the lead, though. Froden again. Outmarking six foot four, Josh Rotherham and Jesse Hogan should waltz into an open goal here. He has, and the Dockers finally have a response. The lead is back to five points. Oh, the camera angle keeps getting me every time. Can Gaff do this? Oh, he's just found Gaff. Uh, Gaff's just found Kennedy. How's he done that? This could be Kennedy's first disposal. I'm not being silly. He's missed as well. Oh, he's just uh, snuck it through. It's back to a one-point margin. Kennedy is in the bad books with Coach Adam Simpson at the moment. Hickey just swats it away. Takes possession. It's a territory game at the moment, and can we hold the mark, darling? Has a chance to settle this and bring it back to seven points the Eagles' way. He's lifted in his last term, and I think this should be a goal, and it is. He sees Brander, he goes for it. Can he out Mark Fife? He can. Jared Brander, the youngster. In his well, third year, really, but only started playing consistently in this opening month or so. It's put it through. The Eagles are out to 13 points. He's held on to the mark. He watches the clock trickle down to zero. The Eagles have escaped an almighty scare from this Fremantle side who gave everything 
to the Eagles. It was much like that, well, I know it didn't really happen in this career, but that pre-season uh, game in real life where Fremantle ended up winning the game by a point, but the Eagles just managed to hold on to escape unscathed, and that is seven wins straight, I believe, the Eagles. And I think... What is that, like 11 derbies in a row? I think that might officially be a record of most derby wins in a row. As you look at the hit out there, that's where I got Kane today, I think. Uh, they don't actually have clearances up as a stat, but I reckon I would have got a smash in clearances as well. Overall, though, a massive effort from the Dockers. I had 13 more inside 50s, but it just felt like they, they were much more polished overall with their opportunities. Tim Kelly and Dom Sheed were the best for us. And who won man of the match? It was Dom Sheed. He's putting in a really good performance in the absence of Luke Shui. I think that's two three-vote games in a row. There's Nathan Wilson, Walters and Aish were the best for them. And Croden was huge with three goals. He was really, really annoying, uh, which shows that he played really well. Before we go, guys, we can look at the ladder and see we're the only undefeated side. And 7 from 7 with a percentage of 144 is about as good as it gets. Next week, we do take on the Sydney Swans, who are in 7th, playing a pretty good brand of football, they must be, because I wouldn't have pegged them to finish that high. The Dogs look like they won last week to get off bottom spot, and St Kilda are new wooden spoon favourites sitting with a percentage of just 73 and one win after seven. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this episode. I'll see you next week when we take on the Sydney Swans. Cheers.